Hello, Magic Makers. Welcome to Storytime with Bombi Rella. This is young adult fiction and may be inappropriate for some younger viewers. A Descendants novel by Melissa De La Cruz. The Isle of the Lost. Copyright Disney Enterprises Incorporated, 2015. Chapter 2. A Wily Thief. If Mal lived above a shop, Jay, son of Jafar, actually lived inside one, sleeping on a worn carpet beneath a shelf, straining under ancient television sets with manual dials, radios that never worked, and telephones that had actual cords attached to them. His father had been the former Grand Vizier of Agrabah, feared and respected by all. But that was a long time ago, and the evil enchanter was now the proprietor of Jafar's junk shop. And Jay, his only son and heir, was also his sole supplier. Jay's destiny had once been to become a great prince, but only his father remembered it these days. You should be on top of an elephant, leading a parade, waving to your subjects. Jafar mourned that morning as Jay prepared for school, pulling a red beanie over his long, straight, dark hair and choosing his usual attire of purple and yellow leather, waistcoat, and dark jeans. He flexed his considerable muscles as he pulled on his black studded gloves. Whatever you say, Dad. Jay winked with a mischievous smile. I'll try to steal an elephant if I come across any. Because Jay was a prince, all right. A prince of thieves. A con man and a schemer, whose lies were as beautiful as his dark eyes. As he made his way through the narrow cobblestone streets, dodging rigshaws manned by Professor Radigan's daredevil crew, he took advantage of their frightened passengers, ducking under clotheslines weighted down by tattered robes and dripping capes, to filch a wallet or two. Ursula chased him away from her fish and chip shop, but not before he had managed to grab a handful of greasy fries. He took a moment to admire a collection of plastic jugs of every size and shape offered by another shop front, wondering if he could fit one in his pocket. Every manner of Oridon rubbish was recycled and repurposed on the island, from bathtubs to doorknobs, as well as from the villain's own formerly magical accoutrements. A shop advertised used brooms that don't fly anymore but sweep okay, and crystal balls that were only good as goldfish bowls these days. As vendors laid out rotten fruit and spoiled vegetables, under tattered tents, Jay swiped a bruised apple and took a bite, his pocket bulging with pilfered treasures. He waved a cheerful hello to a chorus of hook-nosed witches gathered at a slanted balcony Madame Mem's granddaughters, who, while relieved to be out of his sticky fingers' reach, swooned at his greeting nonetheless. Maleficent's henchmen, large, boar like men in leather rags, with the familiar aviator style caps pulled down over their eyes, snuffled an almost unintelligible hello as they passed him on their way to work. Jay deftly took their caps without their noticing and shoved them down the rear of his trousers, planning to sell them back to the guys the next day like he did every week but he resisted the urge to trip them up as well. There just wasn't time to do everything in one day. Looking for something to wash down the sour taste of the apple, Jay caught sight of a familiar face taking a sip from a paper cup bearing the Slop Shop logo and grinned. Perfect. What in Lucifer's name? Mal cried as the cup disappeared from her fingers. She hesitated for a second before realization hit. Give it back, Jay, she said, hands on her hips, addressing the empty space on the pavement. He snickered. It was so much fun when Mal was mad. Make me. Jay, she snarled. Make you what? Bruise? Bleed? Beg? Thieves' choice today. Fine. Jeez, he said as he slunk out from the shadows. Hmm. Pressed hot mud. My favorite. He handed her back her cup, feeling wistful. Mal took a sip and grimaced. Actually, it's disgusting. You can have it. You look hungry. Really? He perked up. Thanks, Mal. I was starving. Don't thank me. It's particularly awful today. I think they threw some raw toads into the brew this morning, she said. Bonus. Extra protein. Amphibians or not, Jay drained it in one shot. He wiped his lips and smiled. Thanks. You're a pal, he said, in all honesty, even though he and Mal weren't friends, exactly, although they were partners in crime. Like his, Mal's jeans and jacket pockets were stuffed with all manner of junk, shoplifted from every shop front in town. A knitting needle was sticking out of one pocket, while the other contained what looked like a sword handle. Can I trade you a teapot for that old sword? He asked hopefully. Everything his father sold was stuff Jay had stolen from somewhere else. Sure, she said, taking a rusty kettle in exchange. Look what else I got, she said. Ursula's necklace. She rattled it in the air. I nabbed it this morning. 
when the old sea witch waved hello. Sweet, he nodded. All I got was a handful of fries. Too bad I can't capture anything anymore, let alone a mermaid's voice. Mal huffed. It's still valuable. If you say so, he shrugged. Jay and Mal were in a constant competition for who was the more accomplished thief. A clear winner would be hard to call. You could say that they had bonded over their love of swiping things, but they would tell you that bonds of any kind were for the weak. Even so, they fell into step on the walk to school. Heard the news? He asked. What news? There is no new news. She scoffed, meaning nothing new ever happened on the island. The island's old-fashioned fuzzy screen televisions only broadcast two channels, Ordon's News Network, which was full of good doers' propaganda, and the DSC, the Dungeon Shopping Channel, which specialized in hidden layer decor. And slow down or you'll get there on time, she added. They turned off the main road towards the uneven, broken-down graveyard that was the front lawn of Dragon Hall. The venerable school for the advancement of evil education was located in a former mausoleum, a hulking gray structure with a domed ceiling and a broken-down colonnade, its pendiment inscribed with the school's motto, In evil we trust, scattered around its haunted grounds. Instead of the usual tombstones, were doomstones, with horrible sayings carved into them, as far as the leaders on the island were concerned. There was never a wrong time to remind its citizens that evil ruled. No way. I heard news. Real news, he insisted, his heavy combat boots stomping through the root-ripped graveyard terrain. Check it out. There's a new girl in class. Yeah, right. I am totally serious, he said, narrowly avoiding stumbling over a doomstone inscribed with the phrase, It is better to have never loved at all than to be loved. A new girl? From where exactly? Mal asked, pointing to the magical dome that covered the island and shrouded the sky, obscuring the clouds. Nothing and no one came in or out, so there wasn't ever a whole lot of new. New to us. She's been castle schooled until now. So it's her first time in the dungeon, said Jay as they approached the wrought iron gates. The crowd gathered around the entrance, parted to let them through, many of their fellow students clutching their rucksacks a little more tightly at the sight of the thieving duo. Really? Mal stopped in her tracks. What do you mean castle schooled? She asked, her eyes narrowing suspiciously. A real princess, too, is what I've heard. Like your basic true love's kiss, prick your finger, spin your gold, skip the haircut, marry the prince level princess. He felt dizzy just thinking about it. Think I could lift a crown off her somewhere? Even a half crown. His father was always talking about the big score, the one fat treasure that would free them from the island somehow. Maybe the princess would lead them to it. A princess, Mal said sternly. I don't believe you. Jay wasn't listening anymore. I mean, think of the loot she'd have on her. She's got to have a ton of loot, right? Hope she's easy on the eyes. Better yet, on the pockets. I could use an easy target. Mal's voice was suddenly acid. You're wrong. There weren't any princesses on the island, and certainly not any who would dare to show their faces around here. Jay stared at her, and in the back of his mind, he heard alarm bells and had a faint memory of an awesome birthday party concerning a princess and some sort of scandal that involved Mal and her mother. He felt bad, remembering now that Mal hadn't received an invitation, but he quickly suppressed the icky emotion. Unsure of where it came from, villains were supposed to revel in other people's sadness, not empathize. Besides, when it came down to it, Mal was like a sister, an annoying, ever-present pest and a pain in the bells, ringing and echoing through the island from the top of the tower, where Claudine Frollo was tugging the rope and being pulled up along with it as she rang in the official start of the Dragon Hall school day. Jay and Mal shared a smirk. They were officially late, the first thing that had gone right all morning. They passed through the crumbling, moss-covered archway and into the main tomb, which was buzzing with activity. Members of the Truant Council pulling up signs from a week-old bake sale. The ear-splitting sounds of the junior orchestra practicing for the autumn concert. The sea witches leaning over their violins. Frightened students scrambled to get out of their way as Mal and Jay walked past the dead ivy-covered Great Hall towards the rusting double doors that led to the underground class tombs. A tiny first-year pirate who ran with Harriet Hook's crew got lost in the shuffle, blocking their paths. Mal came to a halt. The boy slowly lifted his head, his eye patch trembling. Sorry, Mal, he said. Mama, mama, move it, Mal said, her voice high and mocking. She rolled her eyes and kicked the torn textbook out of her way. 
The boy scampered towards the first open door he saw, dropping his fake hooked hand in his haste and sending it rolling away. Jay kept his silence, knowing to tread lightly as he picked up the hook and stuffed it inside his jacket. But he couldn't help asking. Why not just throw a party of your own instead of sulking about it? What are you talking about? said Mal. As if I care. Jay didn't reply. He was too busy, hugging himself tightly and wishing he'd thought to bring a warmer jacket instead of a waistcoat as the temperature dropped the usual 20 degrees as they ventured down the cold marble stairs to the damp basement gloom of campus. Mal had gone silent for a moment and Jay assumed she was still brooding on what had happened 10 years ago when she suddenly snapped her fingers and said with a wicked gleam in her eyes, You're absolutely right, Jay. You're a genius. I am? I mean, yes, uh, I am, replied Jay. Wait. What am I right about? Having a party of my own. There's a lot to celebrate after all. You just said that there was a new princess in our midst. So I'm going to throw a party. Jay goggled at her. You are? I I mean, I was just kidding. Everyone knows you hate... Parties? Mal nodded. But not this one. You'll see. It's going to be a real howler, she grinned. Especially for the new kid. Jay smiled back weakly, wishing he had never mentioned it. When Mal got like this, it usually had terrible consequences. He shivered. There was a definite chill in the air. A new wild wind was blowing, and he was smart enough to worry about where it would lead. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Please come back next time for more. If you haven't had a chance to yet, take a second, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, comment down below. Are there any other stories you'd like to hear? Share with a friend who you think would like these as well. And if you enjoyed this reading and would like to help me to continue to do more, please check out my Patreon page and my social media links down below. Remember, let it go and keep moving forward. Have a magical day. See you next time. Bye.